Well, thank you for being here until the last presentation of the day. I'm going to talk a little bit on how we use data to analyze uh, mobility in our cities. And OK, OK, sorry. <laughs> so first, uh, why we want to try to understand mobility and transportation? Because um, we think it's important uh, because people need to access urban opportunities. And basically, when we are talking about urban opportunities, we're talking about jobs, health, education, recreations, and everything we have to do when we live in a city. So the question of how we do that. So basically, we have two options. The first one is when we have data, we can analyze the data. And there are a lot of opportunities to analyze mobility using data, especially with the cell phone data, with new sensors that are located in vehicles, GPS systems, etc. But the problem is sometimes it's not easy to get that data. So we have some other options when we use simulations. So I'm going to talk about a couple of projects where in the first project I was analyzing actual data, and in other projects, when we don't have the data, we use simulations. Uh, so basically, this is a project I've been working with the Inter-American Development Bank. This is something I've been doing with another colleague, that is Felipe Gonzalez. And this is an open source package in Python that can be used to analyze uh, transit data, basically the transactions that are created every time you go into the public transportation systems. Basically, this, this type of cars, we have the SUBE card, which is the card that you can use to um, pay for buses, metro system, or train systems. And you have all around the world these type of systems. Uh, let me tell you something a little bit about the data. Basically, on the basic level, it could be a little bit more complex, but on the basic level, you have a data set with transactions. Basically, it's each car has an ID, a unique ID. And every time you pay for, for the ticket, you get a transaction. It has the vehicle number. It has a data field. You know the mode of transportation. And you have the type of ticket that you pay. Sometimes you have uh, different prices, for example, when you are a student. And then each vehicle has another data set that is a GPS data that basically each uh, of these machines, they record the location, the longitude and latitude every 30 seconds, every two minutes, or something in between. It depends. Um, so in the basic level, this is, this is the data that you, the minimum required data, data that you need in order to use this, this package. Uh, the code is published in the Inter-American Development Bank Code for Development website. And of course, it's available for any city that has this data and wants to use it. Uh, so there is a lot of literature on how to work with this data. Of course, uh, the, the, the main problem, as you might know, is that you, you know, I mean, you can combine this GPS data and this ticket data and you have an idea of where the trip started, but you don't know anything on where the trip ended. So the literature discussed this, and for many years we've been working on how we can basically recreate or infer what we call the trip chain. Basically, is what every card or every person that every user does during the whole day, basically from the beginning of the day when you go out of your house and take this, enter into the system and then uh, do whatever you have to do within the city. And basically, the way to infer this is you use the origin of, of the next transaction and you do a set of validations in order to know if this could be possible. I mean, for example, if you take a bus line at the beginning of the day to go to downtown and take the second trip of the day. Uh, you take another bus. You have to check whether there is a bus station of this same bus number that you took at the beginning. And you got, once that's validated, you can infer or you can assume that the trip is possible. Then another thing you have to do is trying to understand whether the trip 
is a trip or is a leg of a trip, or basically if you are doing a transfer. Uh, so for doing this, we use a, a window of time using the timestamp. So in this particular case, as you can see, you have three transactions, but it's only one trip. So basically the origin of the trip is the latitude and longitude of the first trip. And the destination of the first trip is the latitude and longitude of the fourth transaction. And of course, we assume the last trip of the day go back uh, to the first trip, which is presumably home. Um, I'm not going to discuss the assumptions because it's going to take too long, but they are discussed uh, in the literature and may, many things to read if you're interested. So once we have this data set that is processed, uh, we can create these origin destination matrices and we can visualize them. Something you can do also, you can provide a shape with different type of zones and the system is going to take these zones and it's going to create these matrices based on, on these zones. If you don't provide anything, the system is going to propose based on data a zonification that you can use. So you can also provide as many zonifications as, as you want. And this is also very technical, but this is the way we, uh, using these matrices, is a way you can uh, plan for better public transit systems. Uh, it also creates different indicators that are commonly, commonly used to understand transport. This is like a, the distribution of distances. Basically, we infer the trip chain and we know the origin of destination of each trip and if we are using open stream maps to calculate the distances of each trip using open strip, the open strip API. And once you have that, you can start doing some analysis and I'm gonna show a few examples of this analysis. This is an analysis where we are looking at a, a, this is like at the train line that go into the south of Buenos Aires, the local train line. So we are looking at the um, trips that are originated or ending in the train stations. And we are trying to analyze uh, the short trips, basically in order, the, this, this, this has been done for the Inter-American Development Bank and they were doing a project and they, want, they wanted to invest in micromobility infrastructure. So basically the idea of this project is trying to understand the route where you have potential for micromobility users. So basically we assume that if you have a lot of short trips and trips that are shorter than five kilometers, there is an opportunity for improving this type of infrastructure. So this is also published at the Inter-American Development Bank website if you're interested about the how it was done. Um, then the, the package also uh, provides some indicators about the, the supply of transport, basically uh, about the routes of the, of the buses. So you can, you can also provide a shape with the route geometry, but if you don't have it, the, the system using the GPS data is gonna um, uh, create a line as close as, as possible. Of course, it's not gonna be perfect. And you can analyze the demand in each part of the, of the route. And this is another work we did with this, with this package. Basically, uh, we wanted to analyze how uh, people from informal settlements uh, move and how, how is the difference between the travel patterns between the low-income populations and, and the rest. Uh, so basically, we using the first trip of the day, which is presumably, as I said before, the closest to, to their homes, we identify the, the trips that started in a radius of the informal settlements, and we create the, the origin destination matrices and these graphs that help us analyze how uh, this population moves. And we can get some, some of the main 
uh, conclusions we infer from these studies, the average distances are higher for low socioeconomic levels, uh, trip, trips of low socioeconomic level uses require more transfers than the trips from higher economic levels. Uh, most of the trips from lower socioeconomic levels are in buses. They rather preferably use metro, for example. And uh, so well, basically that's, that's the conclusions that we have. And also if, if, you, if you want to take a look at the, at the work, it's, it's in the Inter-American Development Bank website. So this is a second, a second work. Also, I've been doing this with the Latin American Development Bank. This is CAF. And in this particular case, it's also a Python package that is called, I mean, the, 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 for the, the other one was called Urban Trips. This is called, um, it's, it's not called Urban Pi, it's Payomu. I'm sorry, I, I think I made a mistake here. Uh, because it's the observatory, the mobility observatory that is a joint initiative between the Latin American Development Bank and the um, five minutes uh, and the Inter American Development Bank, and basically um, what we you need to we, we are working with uh, census data at the radio and that and the, at the census track level, and we are using OpenStreetMap Maps to identify, basically the census data help us analyze where people live at the census track level, I mean, how the, how the population is distributed. Then we are using OpenStreetMap in order to get the equipment within the city, basically from restaurants, uh, public buildings, you name it. We use like a clustering technique in order to identify areas of high density of activity, which Basically, we assume those are where people want to go because there is high high density activities there. So we have our origins, we have our, our destinations, and once we have that, we can simulate trips. And in order to simulate trips, we are using the OpenStreet Maps APA, and we are using the Google Maps APA, and we get a lot of information about these simulated trips. Like basically, we can simulate. Uh, distances, uh, different modes of transportation. Uh, we have traffic prediction with the Google API. We know transfer locations. We even have, in some, for some cities, we have uh, estimated time that you have to wait in the stations and so many things. Uh, we this this work for 30 Latin American cities. And some of the things you can get is what we call the isochrons of travel times. For this is an example for Mexico City, where you can compare um, how the travel times using public transit and using cars, and also the, the, the frequency distribution of the same travel times with cars and with public transit. Uh, this is um, a simulation of the whole day. So you know the, the how velocities and travel times varies along the along the day. We have, we have here like a like a Wednesday, and then we have Saturday and Sunday, and then having information from the census, uh, we infer a socioeconomic level at the census track level, so uh, we can compare how people from different socioeconomic level move. And also, you can do some analysis for a particular equipment. For example, you can get health facilities and analyze travel times to health facilities. And you can identify areas where you have good accessibility to this particular equipment and the areas where you don't. And you can do particular set of policies or deciding which type of equipment you need in different parts of the city. And of course, you can do some uh, differences in travel time for each socioeconomic level. And um, well, thank you very much. Thank you for that amazing talk. We do have time for some questions.
Hi, thank you. Um, it's somewhat a common practice here that someone will ask you to pay for the trip with your car and give you money. Yeah. Um, how often do you see that, or how do you try to correct to, for that, if that it's even a problem for you? Okay, when we basically, when, when you have, in, in some cases we have in the same card a trip that starts in the same place, so basically we split and we basically we, we, we can create a new ID number. So if, if I go with my kid to school and then I come back with my kid, I'm going to have two different trips that are exactly the same and they are counted. In many cases, I can get the first one and the second one is lost. Because, I mean, we have like, like some a percentage of the cases are lost and we cannot do anything. For example, if I do one trip during the day, you cannot, you cannot do anything. That trip is lost. Uh, we get to recover about 70% of the, of the trip chains. And uh, yeah, but yes, we, in the case you are doing, you are doing, I mean, if, if I go with my kids to school and then I go to work, uh, and then someone else is gonna pick my kid from the school, that the second trip is lost, I'm gonna analyze the first one. If I go to, with my kid to school, then I go to work, then I come back and I pick up my kid, the two trips are gonna work fine. I know it's not clear. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Sebastian. It's really wonderful to see all the beneficial uses of this data to understand public service usage and things like that. Also, uh, with my imagination, I can think of some harmful ways to use this data, some funny, some not so funny. And I wonder who governs this data and if you have measures to protect individual privacy and security. Well, I mean, we, we have uh, the data that we get from, from the government is masquerated. They are not the real IDs. So, uh, so we can we can track the users, but we cannot. We don't know anything about the user. We, we we just know you know the latitude and longitude of where someone took the trip, and we have there are like 15 million records a day. So it's it's very difficult, and but there are also ways to. You can you can work with samples. And if you, I mean, if, I mean, actually, it's not that easy to get the data. We we got the, that some da data using like a public information request, and but eventually there are ways you can you can use or the government can use to provide this data and not have the problems of privacy of information. But as I, as, as I tell you, there are so many, so many data, there's, there's a lot of data, and we don't know anything about the user, we only can, we have like an emasculated ID card. I have a question. Yes. Can you tell us more about the data cleaning part of this? You just mentioned that you were able to get the data from some like Freedom of Information Act requests. How clean or messy is it? How much time do you spend on it? Uh, well, the, actually, the, the that data set is large, but it's not that complicated. Because, I mean, for if you, are, if you want to analyze many days at once. But at the basic level, this is the data set. So it's, it's not that that complicated. You know, it's like you have, you have the RID and you have information about the trip. And then you have the GPS system. So basically, you try to locate using the timestamp and the date of ID, the closest one. And uh, so you you have to clean a little bit some of the data because, as I said before, it's in some in some cases you have only one one trip a day. So you have to. But I mean, it took some time. But this is something that we validated a lot. We tried this on, not not only for Buenos Aires. We tried this for the city of Cordoba, which mm -hmm. has a different system. It doesn't have, I mean, in, in Buenos Aires we have the SUBE, but in the city of Córdoba they have other uh, enterprise, so, uh, and it also works, so, but, um, but I mean, we, we try to do as much of the cleaning as possible in, in the package, mm -hmm. so the package handles that. Very nice. Hopefully well. <laughs> okay, we have time for one more quick question, if anyone has one. 
All right. Thank you so much you for so that much. talk. Can we have a good yes.